Hello, students. Oh, another um, lecture series that I'm going to be doing today. Um, whew, what a day it has been. Hopefully, everybody's doing well. Ooh, getting sleep. Had to get a little bit of a stretch there. Ooh, just um, yesterday, uh, me and and uh, my friend Josh actually went to um, Castle Craig's. So ooh, we we did about, I think, a total of about like about five and a half, six hours uh, of a hike. And part of the reason why it was that long was because um, it was about 30 to 40 feet of snow, 30 or 40 inches of snow. It was pretty, it was pretty like, it was pretty intense. I did not expect all of that. Uh, but we made it all the way to the top. Um, I'll send some pictures, probably most most likely in Discord, but it was something else. But I was thinking about it, right? We were praising God up there. We were um, just rejoicing in the Lord, enjoying nature. And one of the things that I was thinking about, my feet got so numb, just to let you know. My 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 feet were frozen, like literally, like they were they were frozen. Um, and my fingers, like it was they were frozen. Um, but one of the things that I was thinking about up there, right, was just just how at certain different levels of temperature, um, like how the atmosphere changes. Like it's so like when you're in the moment and you're just enjoying it, it's great. Right. And, but it was like cold freezing, right. Going towards the top of the mountain. And, and we, me and Josh were also talking about this well, but at the bottom, it was warm. It was nice. You had the sun, you know, uh, you had the sun in both areas, right. You had the sun at the top of the mountain, but you also had the sun in certain parts of the lower areas of the mountain as well. But it was just really fascinating to to look at that and to see, you know, all of God's creation um, and his glory. And one of the things I was thinking about was just how he sets us out on these journeys, right? And we are to explore, we're to think, we're to um, to critically look at the world in a manner in which uh, which takes diligence and work and effort. And and he gives us energy. And then he tells us, you know, he tells us to go out and to do that. So it's, it was just a really great time for me to get into nature. I love nature. Uh, and anybody that knows me knows I do love nature at its finest moment. And at what another thing that you should understand, if anyone, I don't know if you guys go on hikes, if you like hikes, um, but I know I'm taking a little bit more time of, of, of having a conversation, but I do want you to hear this. Um, it's important to get out in nature and just be quiet. And there was at the at the at the bottom of the mountain, there was a lot more noise, right? Even in the woods, there was noise, you heard things. But when we got to the top of the mountain, there was this this couple of different areas where it was absolutely silent. I mean, you couldn't hear anything. And it just goes to show you about how much noise we live in all the time down here. It reminds me, it reminds us that we that down in the valley, in this, in these areas, um, we are always enamored with so much noise. And I just, I, I challenge you all to every month get out into nature, away from the noise, and just to enjoy peace and quiet. So um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, the day you've made, and that we choose to rejoice and be glad. And I pray for each and every one of these students and their grades. Um, I pray for the effort that they have. Um, at the end of the day, you have given us the the deeds of our hands. Anything that we do, we know is a testament to you. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So um, just going over, we're going to do a quick review of lecture one, um, review of the module 14, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, review questions, and then we're going to do some couple of problem-solving questions, and then I'm going to give you some questions on your own to do. Um, I think it's very, very important you have the book. We're coming up going again. I'm going to say it again. We're coming up towards the end, the the last the last hurrah. So we have module 14 test that we're taking on Wednesday. Um, that's why these videos are coming out earlier and sooner. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna be doing module 15 next uh, the following week, right? Finishing up a model module 15, and then in the month of May we're going to be completing module 16. Um, you're not going to have a final test but you do have the final project that you have to present. So you do know that. Um, yeah, uh, just continue to push through. Um, I'm happy at some of the grades at the midterm. Midterms, others, I was kind of surprised on. I know some of you, you know, really gave, didn't give much effort 
Um, some of you gave a little bit more than than others because you had to. So I definitely do. Uh, I, I think that, you know, either way, you guys have done uh, better this semester. And I'm glad that you guys I'm seeing I'm seeing the, the fruits of that here. So let's get started. Um, first review of lecture one, you're going to see a lot of these same slides from the previous slide. Reading through some of these, these are some key points that you have to remember. Uh, remember that chemical reactions, um, they must collide with one another um, in order to react um, from electrons to, and they have to be transferred or rearranged. So in order for a chemical reaction to occur, they have to collide, get close to one another. And we know that. Why? why? Because we have different ways to manipulate um, these types of reactions like heat and things like that. Um, higher temperature increases chemical reaction rates because the reacting molecules, we've talked about this. Once again, we said they must collide higher temps, decreasing in concentration, increasing the surface area. So if you want to understand, right, some of the chemical properties and, and what ke chemical rea how chemical reactions um, come about, then these are some of the four key concepts. And one of them is why, how. Uh, they must collide. Another one is you must increase the temperature, higher temperatures. Um, and, and that means that the molecules will move faster. Decreasing the concentration and then increasing the su surface space. So write those down, uh, uh, burn those from memory. Um, more, chem more, more key terms, uh, the units for the rate constant vary. Remember that? Um, they do vary at times. Sometimes the rate of a chemical reaction will be unaffected by the, uh, the concentration. So that means that the when we're looking at the actual rate equation, that sometimes it's zero, not necessarily one or two. We've seen instances where the exponent, x and y, are either one or zero or two. The reaction rate orders of the chemical reaction must be determined experimentally. Um, they are not equal, um, so we have to um, we have to understand that in its in its totality. But also, chemical reactions never usually finish. Now, this is more theoretical. Um, we don't really. I mean, we just some of these things are just key points, just in case in the in the test they're trying to trick you. Um, so understand that uh, they're just, you know, um, they don't never finish. If that question comes up and you don't answer it correctly, I mean, that's just on you. Um, if the, you know, do chemical reactions ever finish? You know, it's, it's it's like these are these are these are formulated intuition, intuitive things that you need to understand um, when it comes to reaction rates. Uh, either, you know, if we're thinking about this in the essence of what uh, reaction, how long it takes for a reaction to occur, what kinds of things does it take to manipulate the processes of a chemical reaction, like catalysis. So it's like, okay, how can I, uh, how can I apply this, right? And, and making sure that you understand that um, when a chemical reaction takes place, whether we're talking about during uh, this module or other modules, we have to understand in order to uh, fully grasp it, that even in nature, um, chemical reactions never usually, never usually just finish, right? They either, they could circle, they go back again, or they just, they can taper off. So very important here point, uh, not just for the test, but also just in the nature that we see around us as well. So uh, catalysts, uh, just talking about catalysts and, and putting it out there, there are three things we can do to increase the rate of a chemical reaction. Those three things are, we can increase the temperature, gone through this, increasing temperature, so if, if the question, some question says, hey, it is decreasing temperature, uh, you know, except we have to understand that that's not the case, okay? Um, and then increase the concentration of one or more reactants. So we have increasing the concentration, right? That's another one of another way to uh, increase the rate of a chemical reaction and then increase the surface area of any solids, right? Increasing surface area. And then the, the last thing that we can do in order to increase the rate of a chemical reaction to occur is to add a catalyst. Now, what's, what's interesting is a lot of, you know, supplements and vitamins you take that you put in your body are just for this point. Uh, the reaction that the, um, some of these, you know, medical um, institutions want you to do, they either want to speed up processes or they want to slow down processes. They either um, need a, a chemical reaction to happen in your body, whether it's some of the things you guys deal with. I'm pretty sure you guys, I mean, you guys are going through uh, so many changes in your body, right? And when you take supplements, you take vitamins, you take minerals. Um, that's the same exact thing that we're we're talking about here when we when we talk about uh, dealing with a chemical reaction. Um, just the reactions that experiment that you want to do, 
uh, we speed up and slow down chemical reactions based off of the amount, based off of different solids, um, a different weight and mass of uh, different types of nutrients and minerals. So these, this here is is completely uh, applicable even to your life. It's just thinking about it, right? You take a supplement, that supplement, I take some coffee and that coffee is at a particular uh, um, uh temp. Um, and we want, I want to activate more um, dopamine in my frontal lobe. And I want to do that by applying um, uh, coffee. And I want to do that by also adding with my coffee, maybe I want to add um, some sugar, or maybe I want to add some milk. What is milk? What do you think milk does to the process of your coffee? Do you think you get more caffeine or less ca caffeine? And your coffee, if you add in, oh, you have it in a dilute, a dilution. So we, all of these things are ma are mattered and molded into our everyday life. Um, now, catalysts they speed up the reaction rate without actually getting used in the chemical reaction. That's really, really important to understand. And how does that happen? By reducing the activation energy, right? By reducing the activation energy of that react. So, final t key terms um, that I'll be going through, just like I said, um, taking these from the other uh, lecture. Decreasing the activation energy of a reaction increases its rate, R, right? Reaction rate, R. Keeping these in mind, keeping these in mind going, right? R equals K, right? A exponent X plus, right? Minus. So, um, and then we have multiplied by uh, B exponent Y. So, we have to understand as um as we're putting this all together, catalysts speed up reaction rates by lowering the activation um, energy of the reaction. And we have some type of different types of catalysts. Hint, hint, you will need to know these. You will need to have these in memory. Heterogeneous catalysts and homogeneous cat catalysts. I'm going to have them there for you. I'm not going to go through them. Um, but yes, you will need to know those. Now, some of the questions. These are four questions that we're going to go through today. Um, if two molecules want to react together to form new chemicals, what is the first thing that must happen? Two, explain in your own words why the rate of a chemical reaction increases with increasing reactants concentration. Three, what do we call a chemical that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without getting used up in the process? What is the main difference between a heterogeneous catalyst and a homogeneous catalyst? Question one. What I would do here is I would um, press pause and go through this question, answer it, write it down, see what you have stored in your short-term memory first, and then seeing what you can move from short-term to long-term memory. As we talk about coffee and rates and activation energy, I just wanted to get a little bit of my activation energy here. <laughs> okay, hopefully you have paused and gone. So what is this answer? An order for two molecules want to react um, together to form new chemicals. What is the first thing that must happen? In order for those molecules to react, they must collide with each other. Boom. All right, we talked about that. Key one, collide. Let's go to number two. Explain in your own words why the rate of a chemical reaction increases with increasing reactants concentration. Pause. Write it down. All of this is for your good, for your studying habits. Write it down. Okay. Answer. In order for reactants to react, they must first collide. The more likely collisions are, the faster the reaction will go. When reactants get more concentrated, the vessel that contains them gets more crowded, increasing the chance for uh, collisions between reactants. Right? So that's... That's a good explanation of um, explaining what, in our own words, the why the rate of a chemical reaction increases with increasing reactants. We have products, we have reactants, you know, um, and I think that's a pretty solid way. Um, and it's a pretty easy way, right, to really look at it. We have this vessel, right? We have, um, whether it's solutions or things that are inside of the vessel, we have um, how we're trying to get those chemicals to react by sometimes applying heat, Right. And we want we want to see a response from the chemicals that we've applied at different, you know, um, at different rates inside of the uh, container. Right. So it's 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 like, OK, I get it. So let's let's just continue on with this. Right. What's the next one? What do we call a chemical that increases the rate of chemical reaction? 
without getting used up in the process. This right here, you guys should already have steamed at the memory. All right, you know what it is, catalyst. All right, question four. What is the main difference between a heterogeneous catalyst and a homogeneous catalyst? Heterogeneous catalysts are in a different phase from any of the reactants in the chemical equation. They are in a different phase. That's important. What does phase mean? Think about that. What does phase mean? Homogeneous catalysts, however, are the same phases as the reactants, right? So they some they come in a different form. Phase is the reactants. This is the main difference between them. They also use different means to reduce the activation energy of a reaction. So that's two parts when it comes to the homogeneous uh, reaction um, and catalyst and, uh, and one part when it comes to heterogeneous. One part heterogeneous is it's just a different phase of the reactants. Two part of the homogeneous catalyst is you have the same phase and they also have different means to reduce the reactivation energy of the reaction. All right, important put down. Practice problems, okay? Now here, <clears throat> we wanna make sure that we have um, what we need in order to, to really just go through some of the practice problems. I'm only gonna do a couple. Um, I really I really want you you all to go through and we'll do that in your own the own problems, but I really want you to go through. If you guys do want me to, to publish another, um, another video, I will. Let's see if I think this went down. Uh, I will. Um, just you have to let me know, and I would end up publishing it probably until, well, I'll get feedback from you on Monday, um, but I probably wouldn't, if I if I do publish it, it would be Monday night. So if not, this is going to be the only other video that I do for module 14, um, as I'm also getting prepared for module 15 and module 16. So yeah, so I would study hard with this. I would continue to study with these practice problems, continue to do the problems in your book um, to um, focus you up for these for this test because this is uh, everything else for the next three weeks is going to be relatively fast. So, <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. Some of the practice problems we have. So we have our first one. Um, a chemist does a reaction rate analysis. Remember these terms, reaction rate analysis, right? We're looking at uh, reaction that's occurring. And then she collects the following data. We see our data chart below with our trials, the numbers of trials we've had, the uh, initial concentration of, um, and then we have our as well. So we have to, we have to be able to look here and yeah. So, and then we have um, also, we have our question, what is the reaction equation for this, for this reaction? So we have our, I just actually, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, so we have our equation here. <clears throat> and what are we thinking about when we're looking at this particular chart, when we're doing our own trials? Like this is the type of stuff that I really, really love when we get into the full on experiments and like looking at the differences between some of the uh, trials we've had. So it's really great. I like I like this. I, I really like this when I saw this in the kinetics area. Um, so now let's go to uh, solving this particular problem. We're thinking about it. Let's go through it. Um, let's see here. So let me get my trusted. <clears throat> so if we're looking at this problem, right? A chemist does a reaction rate analysis on the following reaction. And we are thinking about this in terms of what is what is the equation that we need, right? So we have R equals, we have our K, and then we have R and O3, right? We separate those out. We have, we separate out, and then we have our exponent. And then we also have, and we're multiplying that, right? By what? We're multiplying that by our oxygen, right? And we have our, we think about it. Why? So both of these, both of these, and this is a little messed up. Both of these, uh, this is how we would extract, right? The two NO grams, I'm sorry, gas plus O2 gas in the chemical reaction. We would take our R equals K A X 
B Y formula that you should have stable to memory. And we are taking our chemical components, molecules in the equation, and we are putting those in, in, in each one when it comes to the reactant and the final product. So now, since we've done that, that being step one, we have to figure out, what do we have to figure out? We have to figure out K, right? We have to figure out K because we're trying to understand um, what is the rate equation, right, for this reaction. So now after we, we have to figure out K, we also got to figure out X, we also have to figure out Y, and we have to look at the data for the experiment. So that's, that's another thing. So the value of X can be determined by comparing two trials uh, to, and hopefully you guys are follow, you guys can follow along with this when you have it in your own book, um, comparing two trials of the concentration of the um, NO changes, but the concentration of O2 stays the same. All right. So we have to look at that. We have, remember, this is what you're doing when you are doing a problem like this. You're looking and you're assessing which one has changed, right? And which one has not changed based on the trial. So you go trial one, you go trial two, you go trial three. And what are you comparing? You're comparing the uh, the chart in O2 or the chart in NO together. And you're looking at each number. And you're like, okay, no change from one trial. Uh, let's see, was there a change in another trial? So you have to be able to first see the changes. And then once you're able to see the changes, okay, what happened in that change? Did they double? Did they triple? Did they quadruple? Um, that's, that's important to look and, and important to have an eye to assess that. Um, this would correspond to trials one and two, we're thinking. So if you're looking back at both of the trials, trials one and two, for this particular question, those are the two uh, made some of the changes. In these two trials, the concentration of NO um, <clears throat> doubled and the rate went up by a factor of four. Right. And this is another thing that you're going to have to get used to um, understanding the factor rate. So that means that X, X here is two, because the only way we can get a fourfold increase in rate from a doubling of the concentration is by squaring the concentration. All right. We got two by two. Right. So we're thinking about that. How are we going to get to that it is by doubling. We have to go up by a factor of four. So <clears throat> very, very important to understand these concepts because you're going to need this during the test. You're going to have to take that equation. You're going to have to implement its uh, the, the molecules, and then we're going to have to go about it in the same exact steps that we're doing right now. Now, uh, the value for y, right? So we have now, now we have now we have the value for y can be determined by looking um, at the trials. Again, same exact concept. We have the value of um, x and the value of y. Um, now the value of y can be determined, right? If we look at, and we're looking, we had one and two for a value of x. Now we're looking at one and three when it comes to the value of y. Look at those, look at the changes and look what the types of changes they are. And then try to figure out, okay, what kind of change did it make? Did it double? Did it not double? Um, so when, when that happened, the rate increased by a factor of two. So we do see um, a doubling there. Now, since the rate doubled, when concentration doubles, that means y equals one. Because there's only one, right? So remember, thus the rate equation, we're, we're thinking about this now, the current rate equation, as we're able to uh, figure out how, okay, what do we have to solve first? Solve for first, X and Y, all right? We have our steps is, okay, what is the rate order, right? So <clears throat> now we have, we still have, we still haven't done anything with K. We still haven't done anything with K and we have NO, and we have that being what did we what did we distinguish that distinguish that was two right and then we have our oxygen right and that is what one so there's nothing denoted there we don't need to put a one if you have to put a one just to make sure that you you don't forget that it's a one then that's okay but other than that we don't need to denote anything now that we have x and y we only need to find out the value of K now, all right? So we've solved for X and Y. This is the same exact type of way that you would do it and um, on a test, solve for X and Y first. And then what do you do? You're gonna look for K. Um, now we can do this by using any one of the trials. Think about this, right? You can do this by using any one of the trials 
in the experiment and plugging in the data in that equation. Once we figure out the rate order, we can take that information and find Y. Now, uh, the only unknown that we'll have is K, and we can we can we can solve for that. So let's let's take a look here. We have R is equal to putting it all together, K, and we have our NO, and we have uh, our order, and then we have our okay. All right, we have we have that down. Perfect. Right now we have to look at our, let's see here, which one are we going to be using? Okay. First, moles per second. And then we have um, making sure that as we are going through and looking at which trials we're going to be using, uh, we have our rate order here. Rate equation equals, we have K times uh, 0. 0.0. 0250. And then we have our actually want to make sure I put this in here first. So I don't this. And then we have our other one. Zero point three. And then remember, I'm not going to put one because I don't need to. So now what we're doing is we are going to find what? We're going to find K. So now we have our moles. This is going to be over. Our, this is uh, over our our um, our trials that we're going to be put, denoting in. We have 0 0.0250. And this is still holding on to the square. Don't forget that. Right, so that's the squared, and that's going to be times on the bottom zero point zero two five three moles. Now, remember the way that this looks because I have it here is you have zero point zero two eight one moles uh, per second. That's on one, and then we have we're, that's going to be divided by um, zero point two five zero moles times squared times. And that's going to be the underneath equation, 0 0.25, 0 0.0253 moles. So after we have that equation, we are going to be equaling 1.78 times 10 to the third power. Power. Now, if you come out with uh, without doing this in the significant figures, don't worry about it. I will convert it for you. If it comes out uh, with a bigger with a bigger answer, don't worry about it. I, I understand, um, and I can do significant figures relatively really fast. So don't don't worry about it. If you don't come out with significant figures, don't worry about it. I will just convert it when you give me the actual when you give me your answer. Um, now that will also one divided by the second power moles squared. Second, now um, after we after we get after we get this um, this equation, um, we then have to make sure that we are denoting it. So we have r equaling one point seven eight times ten to the third, right? We have this, and then we have our one. Just putting it all clean to the. To the second power seconds per seconds times, and then we have our okay. Okay, so as we are uh, looking at what is the rate equation. Uh, this is the way that the rate equation will come out, R equals, right? That's what we're trying to find. So after we've gone through each step, step one, right? We go back, we look at step one. Step one was, okay, we have to first take the, uh, the chemical reaction and we have to figure out R. And we went in and we looked at what the components were first and we got those. And then we had to figure out um, K, X, and Y, 
which we went through and we did, what was K, X, and Y, found out X and Y, we found out what K was, and then we had to figure out what the actual reaction rate was. Now, what's important here is the final rate equation ends up being the R equals 1.78. Again, if that's not a if that's not a significant number, don't worry about it. I'm not going to take off points. Um, but you do need to have the other um, the other uh, components there in order for me to give you full credit, right? So then that's you have that. Um, and then we go through and we look at what the actual rate equation would end up being. So that's here. And actually, it would be here. Right? Okay, so if you if you had problems with any of the steps, let me know. You do need to understand how to go through it like we just did in sequential order as the, the, the question is being asked. Very, very important. Um, and then again, you don't have to, if you, if you don't, if you get the significant numbers, don't worry about that. Okay. Let's go into the next one. Clear this. Okay. So this here, uh, a chemist runs a chemical reaction at 30 degrees Celsius and decides that it proceeds far too slowly. As a result, he decides that the reaction rate must be increased by a factor of 32. Look at some of these key words, right? First, a, chemi a chemist runs a chemical reaction at 30 degrees. So we have a couple of numeric um, numerical numbers here. And then decides that it proceeds too slow. So we're already running the reaction at 30 degrees and it's too slow. As a result, he decides the reaction rate must be increased by 32. So he's given us the reaction rate already. And that's 30, a factor of 32. At what temperature, 10, 10, 10, we're looking for a temperature. We're looking at something for degrees Celsius. Should the chemist run the chemical reaction to achieve this goal? Now, this one's a little bit, a little different, right? Because what we're doing in this one, we have to understand uh, a little bit about intuition. We already know, right? You don't, you actually have more numbers than you think because we know that 10 degrees, every um, every component when it comes to every every increment of 10 degrees, right? We know it's a different, it's a, it's a, a double factor. And we've talked about this, right? Um, on our other, on our other, uh, tests what this actually means. So going through going through this particular problem is a little bit more like, okay, I don't have many numerical numbers, um, but I have I have a little bit of an idea of 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 what this actually means. And and I think what's important is when you're looking at these kinds of of equate uh, these types of problems is think about that. What do I have of prior knowledge? to take with me by answering this particular answer. So yeah, I know, I know that um, uh, that the reaction rate doubles for every 10 degrees uh, incrementally. And he's talking about a factor of 32. Now let's put, we think about that, we need to increase, we need to increase the factor rate of 32. Hmm. So we need to raise the degrees by a factor of five, right? So we have to raise the degrees we have 10 degrees because we know, we know we have to raise, we're, we're looking to get to 32, to 32, how? By factoring by five, that is two by two by two by two, by two, which is equal to 32. So each increment will be by 10. So we have 10 plus 10, right? Plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, which is gonna give us 50. So that means that we have to go from our initial answer, our initial number that he started out by 30 degrees, and we have to increase it to 80 degrees. That would be our answer, okay? This one was 
a little bit more intuitive. You had a little bit understand, but it does strengthen your idea around the factoring. And you will need that on this test. You will need to be able to say, okay, I have these degrees. I have that. Okay, what was that factored by? Let me put that, let me put that in in order to get this particular uh, answer. All right, that one was quicker. So now the questions on your own. Um, these questions on your own, you're going to answer. I will go through, check them off. If you want to ask me some questions about them, you can. Um, first one is, what is the rate constant? Think about that. What is the rate, the rate constant? Um, not, just, not just in the definition term, but also an equation. What is it? What is it? What is the rate? What is the rate constant in the equation? A test done under standard conditions is referred to as. Okay, uh, identify the catalyst in this following mechanism. What would be the catalyst? Question six. Experiment. This experiment tells us that the following reaction, um, about the following reaction, right? So, if we we have the we have the reaction in front of us. And and this one, you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm actually gonna do this one. Um, so uh, is so looking at this reaction as it's occurring uh, is the first order with respect to each of its reactants. And we also know that the rate constant for this reaction is equal to zero point zero one two three uh, one over moles uh, moles per second at ten degrees Celsius. So we're getting some information here that's crucial for the way that we use our equation, right? Take what the question gives you and extract it out. What is the instantaneous reaction rate for this reaction at 10 degrees? Um, if the initial concentration of CH3OH is 0 0.59 moles and the initial concentration of um, our KF is 1.22 moles. Now, this here... This kind of question, what we have to remember is it's it seems like it's a lot, but we have our trusty what? Formula. We know that we have our trusty formula. And our trusty formula will never will never hold us back. So we have R equals K, right? And we have R equals K, R equals K, and then we have our A, right? We have our X. Component. We have um, we have our B. Uh, we have our exponent. We have our exponent um, y. Right. We know that we have that equation, and we know that equation is not gonna not gonna change. But it's about what we're using, right, in order to answer it. So now, with some of the prior knowledge that we've had, and I'm just going to. Oh, sorry. And I'm just going to, that's there. Let's take a quick look. All right. Okay, what do we have? 0 0.0123, okay, at 10 degrees Celsius. Just to let you know, these, this, and this question, the degrees Celsius is just trying to throw us off. So don't even worry about it. What is the instantaneous reaction rate for this reaction at 10 degrees Celsius? It's really just trying to throw us off if the, because we have, we have the components already that we need um in the equation so now we have let's see here we have our equation perfect and then now we what we have to do is we have to look at our plug in our numbers do three one over mole per second and then we have our times let's see here ch3 Oh, okay. okay, so we have we have part of our we have part of our equation here that's already solved. Um, we have our a that we got. We have our b that we got, right? And then now what we have to do is we have to just continue to go for r zero point. Zero point. This is going to carry two, three, zero, one, two, three, and then we have our one divided by one second times 
zero point times zero point five nine. Also now remember <clears throat> um Equals now. Now, here we have to be able to see that we have for each for each component of our answer, right? For each component of our answer, we have. A part in which oh, um, we have a part in which we need. So we have this was already given to us. We already had our um, our x and y that we had, and that's why we were able to put this together actually a little bit faster than what we would have been if we didn't have it. So now we have found k. We have uh, found our y. And we've put together, now think about it, right? This is, all this is, is simply the application of the rate equation. That's it. Um, the problem already tells us what R equals. And that equals 0 0.0123. Um, and that's one over moles squared, moles per second, times our CH3, OH, times our KF. Now, after we are able to figure out that first step in the equation, after we have our original equation, we have to do R equals, we still take our form, 0 0.0123, and that's over 1 divided by molarity, moles per second, and that's times 0 0.59. Now, we're, what we're doing here in order to get this at a reduced manner, we have to remember, you have to cancel out our moles, right? And then we have times 1.22 moles, and that's going to equal, after we do our cancellations, that's going to equal 0 0.089 moles per second after the cancellations. The cancellations will happen from the here and here leaving us with one M and one S, one molarity, one, one uh, per second. Okay, now these, going, going through each step, you're gonna wanna do this a few times. Um, and it's important that you wanna go through it, just kind of go through it a couple of times, different times, um, so that you understand it at a, a deep level. Again, if you want me to go through and have one and do one more of these, um, you know, I'm not, it's it's just, I would want to, I want you guys also to go through it. A couple of the practice problems we might go through in, in class as well. But um, see here, finish up. So that was, that was, that was good. Making sure that you guys go through. I know this is going to be a little bit faster, um, and this is basically going to be the corpus of the rest of our semester, with the time that we have. But um, I want to say uh, this has been wonderful. Uh, make sure you study hard. Make sure that you um, are asking any questions that you need by email or by Discord. And uh, let's just pray, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this day, the day, this beautiful day that you've made, and that we choose to rejoice and be glad in. I thank you for the studying of these students, and that. Um, you know, you just continue to bless them with the fruit of their fruit of their uh, their hands. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. All right, have a great day and enjoy the rest of your break.